So this is going to be a quick little refresher uh, poetry course for people who may be struggling to write a poem. So this is going to be like a little quick refresher course. So I'm going to be kind of using um, poems of this writer, Keisha Shepard, because they're nice and short. See how short they are? Um, publishers like your poems to be as tight and short as possible. They like them to be under 40 lines. And I find that using shorter poems to teach um, tend to be less intimidating to new poets. So I'm going to give you some tips here. So when we look at her, her poem here, let's zoom in here. Her poem is called The Cure. Okay. So you can actually use her title. You can use the title The Cure because no one can copyright a title of a body of work, no matter what type of literary work. So um, you can always redefine the word cure instead of saying cure. Um, you can you can um, call say the answer or whatever. But let's keep it as the cure. So obviously she's um, saying she has to do some healing. She doesn't quite say what what the healing what kind of healing she needs, she needs. Um, although she could have included something about her to kind of hint at the healing that she's trying to do, um, but she didn't take that route. So that's something to think about. Um, she could have written two lines or, or a few more um, that have to do with her body or her mind to kind of hint at the healing that she needs. But not quite saying because she wants the reader, you would want the reader to use their imagination on why um, you are looking for a cure, why you're getting the cure. So here she says, I walk this ground and through the woods and all at once my heart does feel. Now she's using a rhyming scheme. All right. I just noticed that. So you don't have to. Um, your poem does not have to rhyme, um, but you can always edit it to change words and making a rhyming poem if you want. So this line here, you notice she says, I walk. So she is saying something that she's doing. Now, of course, you can first write down a few things that someone would do if they were looking for a cure or trying to cure themselves for a certain thing. So maybe you're looking for the cure for a lifelong broken heart. You've had a, this broken heart for 20 years and now you realize you need a cure. Uh, it's not just going to go away on its own. Okay. Um, so you can write something, some things you, you would just do. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be walking. Now, I'm not going to give any ideas because I'm fully aware that some of my ideas off my YouTube has been stolen. Even a couple of my writing ideas have been stolen. I noticed some big companies tend to end up with my writing ideas within two months after I post them. So I'm not doing that anymore. But that's just giving you an, um, an, a tip. You can decide who you are and what you are first before you write your opening lines. Of what you're doing so who are you what are you um and you can write that opening line and then here she gets into there is no greater cure than this for good to have slept away the winter's chill um so i guess here she's getting into um slept away the winter's chill would be like um cold maybe feeling abandoned, maybe feeling um, ignored or whatever, slept away, um, some sort of uh, cold loneliness. Because sometimes people get lonely in the winter, you know, because everyone's inside and doors. It's hard to meet people. So perhaps she's slept away um, uh, some loneliness. Well, you can get into interpreting her poem first if you want. Uh, but she says there's no greater cure. So um, you can say something else. 
there if you want. I, I can't give you any ideas because I'm not going to write your own, your work for you. So here she says, I pick an oak leaf for my own. And so she says something that she's doing. Notice she's doing stuff. I walk. Then she makes this statement here. And um, some sort of like, you know, imagery statement here. Then she says, I pick. See, she says she's doing something. Then she makes another statement. In nature, things are free to roam. And it helps me know I'm not alone. So she makes some um, wise statement there. Um, and then she says something she does again. I dusk, I head for home across the splintered field. And then... Um, she just continues on. She does an expansion of this sentence here. And she sort of like, you know, um, expand, expands that last sentence so that she can end her poem. Um, but she's giving clarity from here to there and back again for nothing do I yield. So she's giving a lot of clarity. She's jumping around, giving clarity, but it's like hard clarity using imagery. So you can take that route. Um, when you have trouble writing, you can just find a poem and you can, you know, pick it apart and uh, write your own. Okay. So right here, you would write with what you're doing and then something on your mind is like a statement, your opinion or, or something about what you're doing. Um, and then here you do something again. And, um, you, you, you write your opinion, kind of this kind of related to what you're doing. She says in nature, things are free to roam and it helps me know I'm not alone. So she's saying that her roamingness, where she's picking this and walking here, she's hinting at that other things are doing it too. So she's defending her right to, <laughs> to walk and roam, uh, to roam the, the woods or nature here. So she's basically replying to possibly someone saying you shouldn't be roaming or um, you shouldn't be doing this. And she's saying why she should. Okay. And this is her, her answer. And then she ends it with a change in, of time. See at dusk, see that leap here. So it's a time change here. So she doesn't say everything. She only kind of mentions what she feels um, is echoing in her mind, what what's she remembers, uh, what she wants to remember about the experience and all of this, or what she finds is most significant to share with the reader um, that is really connected to her title, The Cure. So she doesn't have any excess lines that really don't do their job with celebrating her main idea, the cure. Um, these are all like little subjects here. She does that. She does this. Okay. Although they're all kind of like semi subjects under this main subject. She doesn't say finding the cure. She she just reveals the cure. So, um, she goes here to many hidden, notice she keeps this hidden, like she says hidden places. So she's kind of adding some mystery and allowing you to imagine what these hidden places are. So there you have that. Let's look at another one of her poems that, um, I'm using. So I'm using for this lesson here. She says, in, the, in winter in the woods alone against the trees I go. So she's getting very rhymy here. Um, let's use this one. Not that one. That's not the one. Okay, right here. So this is really good when you want to get some sketching done. See her poem, Sunset Walk. I take a sunset walk through the fields. Still grace with dens, dens, self flies and dragonflies. The young purple martins are... Notice she's naming the the bugs and she's naming stuff um still dining oh okay she's using kind of like um metaphor like 
um, in persona. She's like giving these these Martins a like um, human nature. Okay, she's giving them like human nature. Purple Martins are passing through, still dining dining on vitals of bugs and flies <laughs> before making their way further south. So dining is a is a is a very human human nature type word to use. So she wanted to tell a slant there. They skate, see. So what she's doing is um insight into sight. And there's a good book called Creative Poetry. Creating Poetry is by John Drury. You might want to read that book, okay? And it talks about um, insight into sight. So that's what she does here when she says they skate the sky with parachute wings gliding. Okay, so that's that's nice. Um, she could have used a different word here. Um, that could have kept with the um, sound pattern. Um, but that's okay. She still wanted to give a hint that it's still a bird. All right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, she could have actually expanded this whole part here to make this very long so it seemed like it's definitely a, a wing expanding. Um, I personally wouldn't have kept it so tight here, parachute wings. Um it sounds like the wings are still kind of in and not actually out like a bird. It's almost like they curled the wings in a little bit and then put them out. I mean, that's the feeling I get when I see this tight little phrase in the middle of this long line. Uh, then she says, under a sliver of moon. Okay. Orange and curled. I find that this is too mysterious. I mean, what kind of orange? I'm sure there's other things that she could have used to give that a more in-depth look on the type of orange it is. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so that it's not just a... It's not just adjectives put in, but there's some imagery attached to the adjectives. That would have even expanded this line even more to really give, like skating and wing expansion of her imagery that she's trying to give. Okay. Um, yeah. She even could have changed this word. Sometimes you have to try on different words. Like you try on different things when you get dressed <laughs> to just see, I would have chosen a different word here to celebrate the sound here. I, um, she went with the obvious, like, oh, the dragon's eye. There's a, there's, there's like five different ways to say the word I, so many ways you can say the word I, but this helps you when you, when you critique other people's palms and you break them down, it helps you to understand how to write your own and how you would write it. Okay. Um, how, how many times would you, how deep you would make your slant? how much slant you would add, how many adjectives you would add. It helps you to find your own style by critiquing other people's work, but also find your subject matter, you know, a main idea if you don't know what to write about. So she says sunset walk. I would have said sunset stroll <laughs> because it's, it's, this this is the says the sunset stroll. See the sounds? But she says walk, walk, walk. She's kind of celebrating the W's. I see walk here. I see walk here. I see walk here. But she also has a lot of S's in here. So she could have went sunset stroll. Okay. Um I stroll. I I take a sunset stroll. Um, through, she can expand. She could have put something here. Okay. She could even say, I take a sunset stroll within. 
Or she could have said, I take a sunset walk within. See, that would have added another sound with the walk, walk within. Um, so, you know, great poetry is very slanted. Like the more you slant and you, add, and you celebrate these wonderful sounds, um, the more it becomes what poet Robert Haas was saying. Um, uh, amazing, uh, uh, great, great information. Okay. You want to try to compact your poems, parts of your poem compacted with literary devices. That way you're showing the publisher that you're celebrating a variety of your literary tools and you're, you're, you're showing your skills. Okay. <laughs> um, I personally, this is a great poem, but for me, I would, I would consider this to be a second draft. Okay. Um, she's actually, she, she, I think she's pretty good. I just think that there needs to be more work as a poetry teacher. I'm allowed to say what I'm saying. So let's look at this one here. Morning scene. You're watching this video right now in the morning. So go to your window and watch something or get a picture, this public domain. And let the picture be of somebody watching something or something outside in someone's yard, something's happening and it could be in the morning hours and use that to jumpstart your, um, poem. Let it be copyright free photographs and public domain photographs so that you can still, you can still use them to write about. You don't have to worry about getting sued <laughs> or copyright infringement. So, um, or you can go outside and take some pictures and video record some things that you're singing. You can do this this morning or do it for five mornings in a row and then write down what you're seeing in the video clip or in the photograph. All right. And now you can include yourself at some point, you know, in the poem. So this part could be what you're seeing in the video or photograph that you've taken about this related to a morning scene, something you've seen in the morning. And then here you can use your imagination. Um, it's important to not always rely on memory and dreams. Sometimes you got to use your imagination. You can do the what if, like, what if I did this suddenly? <laughs> um, and then added some, uh, uh, clarity. She interrupts the three crows, my usual company. See, so this person includes their self and someone else here. Okay. So here's the, the person talking and here's someone else. And then she gets back to talking about the other person. And then there's a time jump. See a time jump here. Now they are gone. All have scattered through the fields to finish what they have started. So she's adding some mystery here because she doesn't know what they've started. She's saying, I'm going to leave it up to the reader and myself to imagine it. So that's why she didn't reveal it here. Um, but she could have even expanded it. She could have expanded it, added a little bit of clarity not revealing what they've started, but how they started it, how they possibly have started it. All right. She could have, um, uh, gave those crows human nature and added a line here to celebrate something that they're doing something a certain way that is in a human nature way. She could have let that, have let that be like a little additional line. Um, like she could have said, perhaps she could have added the word perhaps, and then wrote a human nature based type of line and let it be like the crows doing it. Okay. This is why I tell people it's important to take a poetry mentorship because poetry teachers, we can critique your lines and we can kind of help you see how you can have taken lines to another place, how you could have expanded or shrunk lines. It's going to help you decide your signature style. 
All right. But I find that your style will continue to change as you continue to have an interest in writing your lines different kind of ways. But for a while, you may have a signature style like this, right? is her style probably right now. But if she took lessons, if she took my poetry lessons or Jim Bennett, my old mentor's poetry lessons, she would probably do something different with this poem. You can only write as well as what you know. And that's why you must try to learn as much as you can about the craft of writing. So you'll have options, so many options that you can use to write your poem in different ways. Okay. So you can use the structure of her poem here. You can use the morning scene. Okay. Um, I'm looking at her sounds here, blue. She could have changed this word here to match the sound here. Um, she could have celebrated assonance and consonants even more if she would have went searching for a different word here that could possibly have the similar sound to sounds in this, this, this line. Okay. She does have scene and queen. Okay. But I feel like it could have come sooner. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I find that studying poetry early on in your day, reading, because we're supposed to, as they say, read, edit, write. So if you read poetry and you study it and you critique it, more than likely when you go to write, you'll write something decent. <laughs> okay. So this is a one way to show appreciation for poetry and warm up your pen so you can write a good line. Um, take other people's poems and say, okay, what literary devices do I know? And how could I have told this person to write these lines using the literary devices that I know and sitting sentence building skills that I know? What would I tell them? You know, teach it, then write it, teach it, then write your own version. So instead of saying, I spot a deer, you can always say, I spot. No one can copyright two words. <laughs> so, um, I spot like, this is not like a whole image right here. So you, you can say I spot and then fill in with a different noun here, different noun here and different words here. And then include somebody else and then include you include that person again and then time jump here where she says now they are gone and then write what you think they're doing somewhere um where you're not at that's her line here her image her her uh focus here but let it be in your own words uh, something different. Okay. So now they, now they are unseen. See, <laughs> you can change the words. Um, just, you know, have fun. I love, I love critiquing poetry. It's one of my favorite things to do because it, it, it requires me to think and, 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 and sharpen my, uh, memory with my skills. So if you want to try to remember the literary devices that you learned, critique other people's poems and revise them to have literary devices. But of course, um, make sure you're changing the words and, um, you know, your, your images, your imagery is your own imagery. It's not their imagery. Okay. Of course she cannot copyright conversations to sitting starters. Like now they are. See, now they are gone. This sentence here has been used so many times. She cannot copyright that. Um, she interrupts. Nope. That's probably been used a thousand times. So that's, that can't be copyrighted. I spot that can't be copyrighted. Um, that's everyone say I spot, I spot. There's actually, um, a game that's called I spot. <laughs> So, uh, 
but the imagery itself here, the imagery is hers. You just got to use your own imagery. Um, so the poems that I use as lessons examples in here, on here, um, are copyrighted and protected by Keisha Shepard. If you heard me use any of my, any of my own ideas in this lesson, you cannot use them without my express permission. Everything that has been said in this video cannot be used without the author's, author's opinion, author's permission. That includes what I have said. Okay. She has wonderful, um, poems here that you can use to jumpstart your own poems and use the structure and the themes and stuff. She has quite a bunch. See, it's one of the reasons why I chose this website. So it's called whispers from the dot All right. You do not have to give credit for using the structure or outline of someone else's poem, nor the uh, main theme of it. You don't have to give copyright. Uh, you don't have to give credit. You can write about a morning scene and use the same title all you want. It's, it's no one can copyright that and you don't have to give credit. I hope you was taking notes because this video will eventually become a members only video when I turn that on. So this is uh, me giving a very selfless free lesson being selfless today. So her website, once again, is called whispersfromtheridge.weebly.com. Um, if I was her, I would not post so much of my work on a website because her work is actually pretty good. It just need I personally feel it just needs a couple little tweaks and it would be, it, it, it could be published multiple times. Publishers will publish it a lot. Uh, I think that, let's see, let's, let's learn about this writer. I think that someone didn't talk to her as much about not putting so much of her work on a, on a web page. She needs to actually, um, edit her work a little bit more and then start submitting it. I would love for her to be my student. <laughs> it's, it shocks me that. Um, she has teachers and they, that they, they didn't teach her some of the things that I'm saying. Okay. But I do have to admit, I have been, I have been told I'm gifted in writing poetry. So some teachers are just all textbook. They, they're not really good at critiquing. Everybody who writes great poetry isn't always good at critiquing <laughs> or being able to dig into another poet's work and see where they can improve it. Not every teacher is good at that. But when you find a teacher that can do that, you stay with that teacher. And I can do that. Plus write, write poetry. <laughs> I guess that's why some teachers say that I'm gifted. When I critique people's poetry in the classes I may take, they always say, oh my goodness, I love this critique. They're like, they're just so blown away. They will write like a big paragraph saying this critique has literally helped my work so much. I love your critique. So I do charge a fee though for critiquing. <laughs> I don't normally critique for free, but this, this is just me helping y'all new poets. Okay. Giving y'all some of the writing rules, how to use other poets work to find your, your theme, to find your way into a poem and learn how other poets could have um, improve their work. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.